there any similarities in personality or players from uh, in this Maryland team from a couple of years ago when they faced them two years in a row? Uh, a little bit. I mean, obviously, Pegram was there. You know, who, know, who knows if he's going to be in, in the game or not. Uh, there were some other guys, but they were pretty young. I think most of their skill players and stuff are, have moved on. But uh, there's a little similarity, but different coordinators, different head coach, different players. When you uh, watched Saturday's game back, what, what were your takeaways? What, what did you feel about the tackling everything? Yeah, uh, obviously, didn't, didn't tackle very good in the secondary. Uh, you know, there was times when we played really, really good, like you wanted to, times where you didn't play really, really good. Kind of, uh, you know, same script, which has to change. You know, we get a turnover and, and things, don't, things go good on offense. We get a kick return for a touchdown, then the offense scores, and we have a bad drive on defense, then we get a three and out, and it's, you know, it, it's kind of the same script. It's got to be complimentary football, and we got to all be working together. How much of it boils down to just the points you guys allow? They had a kickoff return, of course, and a short field on one of the touchdowns you allowed. Um, you know, other than that, probably wasn't that bad, just 23 points. But in, your, in your mind, how, how, does that, how does that factor? How does what factor? The, the points that you allow, how, how much do you, how does, how does that weigh into you know, the way that you judge the performance? Uh, I mean, obviously, points is king right now, right? I mean, it's, it's who has the most points on the board. Um, and we didn't have more on the board, for sure. Uh, the other ones, I mean, it's hard to take into account. You know, it's, uh, points given up is a is an interesting stat. You know, obviously you want them to be really low, but if that happens on special teams or if it's a offensive, uh, you know, turnover for a touchdown, it goes against us. Um, so when that happens, we have to be able to put the fire out and not allow them to score any on defense. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's got to be complimentary football. If a bad thing happens on the other side, we have to have good things happen to us and, and back everybody up. Uh, but obviously, you know, you want to allow as little points as possible. If we can allow very little points, we're going to win a lot of football games. What did you think about the way you guys in the middle up front um, handled the absence of uh, Darian and Carlos? Yeah, I thought some of those young kids, they thought they did some good things. Um, you know, there's some things that probably those other guys were in, you know, would have been a little better just because of knowledge of the game, just because of uh, knowledge of the scheme. Those guys probably, you know, made a few mistakes in, in – you know, maybe a line slant here or there, but those guys played physical and they did a good job getting in there. When you see the film of those young guys, what's that next step for them in the offseason as they maybe take a bigger role next year? Well, I think you, for the next step for them is you already you just played against Wisconsin, who is very, very physical. That's a really good, really good football team, really good offensive line. You got reps against those guys and you weren't getting pushed around. You can, you can play against anybody in this league. We just got to keep getting you ready and ready and ready and more reps and more reps and more reps. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things to point to that things are moving in the right direction. Um, there's a lot of things on the outside that look like there's, you know, it's not. You know, you, you can't give up on, on, the, on the one drive after I think our, our offense scored a touchdown early. You know, you can't give up miss tackles on a screen on third down and let them get the chains and then miss a tackle on a slant, post safety misses a tackle on the slant and it goes for a touchdown. You can't do that stuff. You, you make those tackles. The, the thing that you have to keep emphasizing to these guys is we are beating ourselves right now. And it's not them, it's not me, it's we. We are beating ourselves. It's missing that tackle, missing those tackles, missing a, cute, a few key assignments, get, not getting off the ball on, on, uh, or not getting off the field on third down changes the game dramatically. If you can get those things corrected, guys, you may have only given up 10 points. 13 points on defense. I know there's other points scored in the game in other situations like we already talked about, but you could have decreased every football game we've played. You could have decreased the amount of points scored by at least 10, at least 10, probably more. Indiana, we couldn't get the field on third down. You know, and it's, if, if, you, if the offense busts on third down, you punt it and you move on. Everybody's happy. If we bust on third down, they get another set of downs. They get to keep moving the sticks, keep moving the sticks, keep moving the sticks. It's magnified a lot on defense. You have to, you have to get it done. Do you feel like you have a pretty attentive group to try to you know, solve some things the last two weeks, even though if you are four and six? How do you feel about their response? Yeah, their, their response has been great. You know, their response has been great. And there's some guys out there playing that, you know, Mark Heldis-Muke, obviously, 
you know, he missed a tackle, he's pretty banged up, and he just keeps coming back and coming back and working, and he's never missed a practice, even though he's really, really banged up. So you got to appreciate a guy like that, you know, building that culture of toughness, building that culture of wanting to practice. Uh, but some bad things are still continuing to happen. You switched up uh, Boodle and Taylor. Is that just a game situation thing, or is that a long term? No, I mean, right now, you know, when you had, obviously, when you had Deontay Williams and, and Markell is healthy, you have a, a, a good stable of safeties back there. Deontay's hurt. Markell's hurt now. Cam is a, a lot better at corner or in the slot. And so DiCaprio is a really intelligent football player. It's just a better move to have him at safety right now and Cam at corner. Scott mentioned Ty Robinson in particular. I thought it was kind of a bright spot for the snaps he got. How have you seen him grow since he's been with you? Yeah, he's, he's continued to get better every, every day. Um, he's a guy that's going to get continue to get better. He's another guy. He went in there as a, as a true freshman, played against you know, one of the best offensive lines in the country and held his own. So I, that's a very, very positive thing to see. Hey, would you have played in the Big Ten? Do you think uh, Maryland would be a part of the Big Ten? No. No, I, I guess that wasn't really on the, the radar back then, but they are now, and the Big Ten's expanded, which is a good thing. And, uh, you know, you get the guy kind of go Midwest and all the way to the East Coast, and um, it's probably a good thing for the players to experience some of that, and it's a good thing for the, the country to, to see Big Ten football. You know, it's more prevalent on the East Coast now than it ever has been. Is it? Oh, uh, I think college football is a lot more diverse than when I played. When I played, you know, just like when Coach Frost played, I mean, you're a running option or you had a fullback in the backfield and you're running pro stuff. Um, now, you know, in whatever league you're in, you know, obviously in the Big Ten, you get spread, you get uh, option stuff, you get big people smash them, you get quarterback run stuff. Just like in the AAC or the Pac-12, you know, you, there was Pac-12 was obviously a mostly spread and, and a little bit of pro, and then you had Stanford running running big people. So I just think football is more diverse in general. Yeah.